next on Worcester News Tonight, local firefighters traveling out west, helping to fight the rampant wildfires. We hear from an Auburn firefighter tonight. Plus, a candidate for state representative is reaching out to the community while also supporting local businesses. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. A central Massachusetts firefighter has been in Utah for nearly two weeks to help battle the wildfires in the West. Auburn's Rich Lavangie is one of hundreds across the country helping battle the Dollar Ridge Fire. Thousands of acres of land have burned to the ground so far this year, and Lavangi says it's a site he won't soon forget. Our Cam Jandro joins us now live with more. Cam? Anna, the state has been sending firefighters out west for a few weeks now, and tomorrow they'll send 20 more to help combat these wildfires. Now for Lavangi, this is his first summer being deployed, and today he shared his experience with us. Auburn Call firefighter Rich Lavangi is in Utah battling the Dollar Ridge Fire. Burning since July 1st, it's destroyed 57,000 acres. Levangi says it was unlike anything he's seen. It kind of looks like the end of the world. You got smoke as high as you can see. Um, you got, you know, 100, 200 foot flames coming off the trees. And then after the fire is gone, you look back and there's everything's gone. The Uxbridge native has been with the Auburn Fire Department for three years. He is fighting the fires as a member of the Bureau of Land Management, working 250 hours in just two weeks. We dug a lot of line, which means, you know, use special tools and uh, basically dig all the vegetation down to the mineral soil, to the dirt. And you create like a two-foot buffer so the fire doesn't get over that. Back in Auburn, Fire Chief Stephen Coleman is glad to have someone from his crew helping out west. I'm proud to know that, that he's out west, uh, not only representing the Bureau of Land Management, but representing the Auburn Fire Rescue Department. There are more than 100 large wildfires burning in states like California, Utah, and Montana. Coleman says the work and training is completely different for firefighters like Levangi. It's a whole nother type of firefighting. It's a whole nother type of environment. But here on the East Coast, uh, you know, fortunately, uh, we don't see the, the type of fire activity that they do. Levangi helped extinguish fires in Wyoming earlier this year. His current trip to Utah is the second time he's ever been deployed, and he plans on doing more. I like helping people um, fight wildfires. There's not too many people in this country that do it, and uh, you know, they're always looking for help, and I know, you know it's just not something a lot of people do. I enjoy working hard, and seeing fire, and putting in a good day's of work. Now, Levangi will be on a plane home tomorrow. He says after two weeks of grueling work, he can't wait to see his wife and his dogs. Anna. Thanks, Kim. A candidate for state representative on the campaign trail tonight with a unique way to support local businesses. It's a big focus in his bid in the 17th Worcester District. Democrat Stu Loosemore hosted a meet and greet outside Hot Dog Annie's in Leicester. Customers who purchased a hot dog received a free ice cream from the Susie Q truck just outside, courtesy of Loosemore. He says small businesses serve and employ the local community. And it's important to make sure their bottom line is healthy. Making sure that we're not putting into place mandates or other costs that are unnecessary or overburdening uh, that would cripple the small business, that, that would hurt their ability to support and thrive in the local economy. The primary election for state representatives will be held on September 14th. Luce Moore faces fellow Democrats David LaBeouf and Pam Jem. Today is the final day to register to vote in that state primary. Under state rules, voters must register or make changes at at least 20 days before an election. City and town officials' offices will be open until at least 8 o'clock tonight. Online registration will be open until midnight. A new survey finds Massachusetts most disapproves of President Donald Trump. The survey done by Morning Consult tracks Donald Trump's approval rating in all 50 states. 22 states have a net approval rating for Trump, while 26 have a net disapproval rating. According to their data, 62% of Massachusetts residents do not approve of the job President Trump is doing, while 35% approve. The potential for a large-scale solar project in Webster has some residents concerned, while others say it would benefit the town. It would be set up on more than 130 acres of land, and its opponents say they're worried about their environment and resources. Our Chandler Walsh explains. 
Debbie Mikowski looks out to forest in her backyard in Webster. She's afraid a proposed solar panel project in the Blueberry Hill neighborhood could change her view. I just think that they need to go someplace else. The project proposed by Blue Wave Solar would include more than 17,000 solar panels on 134 acres of land. State Senator Ryan Fatman has concerns, writing to the town, the Department of Energy Resources discourages sites where large-scale industrial solar will result in significant loss of land and natural resources. Some in the area a little further from the project don't see an issue. I think it's um, wonderful because it's going to be way up on the hill and no one's going to see it. I don't think it'll influence anything. It should be fine as long as it's in the woods. Uh, I'm all for it. For Mikowski, she's worried the solar project will destroy the neighborhood's wildlife and contaminate her and her neighbor's water. That many panels, there will be vegetation under them, and I'm so concerned that the only way to control that is with chemicals, and we all have well waters up here. Mikowski says the panels should not be constructed in a residential area. I bought here with the forest behind me, and that puts value in my home. It would be no different than if they drain Webster Lake. How would those people feel if one day they had no water in front of them, their house would not be the same. That was our Chandler Walsh reporting. Northbridge and Uxbridge Police Departments hosting dozens of kids over the course of two weeks this summer as part of their Police Youth Academy. The Academy gives students a behind the scenes look into what goes into being a police officer. Officers in charge of the program say it allows students to build relationships with law enforcement. Wednesday, kids got a chance to learn the proper procedures into pulling someone over. I like see like cars on the highway getting like pulled over and I only see it from like a view going by. And so now I actually know what they're like saying and doing. It's a little fun and we kind of learned about how you never know what will really happen when you pull someone over like this. They see us in the schools a lot. Um, they have a lot of questions every day. Why are you here? What are you here for? Um, the school position is, is building relationships and that's also what we're trying to do here. The Academy is free and funded by the police department. A sad update to a story we first brought you last night. Crews have not been able to recover the wedding band of a Korean War veteran's late wife. Helgerson Excavating and GL Plumbing Drainaway spent three days searching and say they did everything they could to retrieve the ring, which belonged to Francis Trainer's wife. Trainer was told it fell down a storm drain outside of Market 32 in Worcester. This morning, crews removing everything from the drain. We were able to suck up everything. Then we used a jetter hose to break down everything to make it easier to suck up. So now we're going to transport that to Helgeson's shop. It's a garage, got uh, floor drains in there and everything. So now we're going to lay it on the ground, sift through all the muck to find that ring. But even after spending five hours sorting through everything with a metal detector, the ring was nowhere in sight. Trainer was there helping them along the way. We're less than 10 days away from the opening of MGM Springfield, but don't expect the resort casino to look like Vegas anytime soon. Last night, the State Gaming Commission denied the casino's proposal to put up an animated digital sign off 91. The commissioners saying the sign moving images could distract drivers. The casino can still put in the sign, but the images just can't move. The commission says it'll reconsider it 90 days after the casino opens.